Hello, it's Ashley, and I'm back with episode 16 of the web novel, Marry My Husband. And let's, wait, am I on 16? Yeah. Yes. Chapter 16, why are you here, Mr. You? Jiwan left after sending Suman into the bathroom. She didn't care what kind of lies or excuses Suman spewed. Jiwan, wait! Unho chased and caught her. I said I don't want coffee, she said. A black sedan appeared at the end of the street. It glided over and stopped in front of them. I've seen this car before. The moment Jiwan narrowed her eyes, a heavily tinted window slid down. She blinked at the driver. Miss Kang. Mr. Yu? Why are you here? Jiwan stared, taken aback. Unho gripped her sleeve, but she knocked his hand away. What brings you to this area? Ji Hyuk stepped out of his car. He strolled over and lightly moved Jiwan back, putting a step between Jiwan and Unho. I have plans nearby. He turned to Unho. Is this your friend? Jiwan had a bad feeling about how stiff Unho's face had gone. She forced a smile. Yes, we went to the same high school. Where are you headed? Home? We're going to a cafe. We're drinking coffee, just the two of us. Unho interjected in a tight voice. Jiwan, is this your boss? It's none of your business. Jiwan replied. Ooh, girl. She replied icily. Why did Ji Hyuk suddenly appear? And why was Unho jumping into their conversation? She took another step back. Their classmates would start leaving the restaurant soon. She didn't want to see them. I'll be off now, Mr. Yu. I'll see you on Monday. Jiwan, Unho called. Miss Kang, Ji Hyuk said. Jiwan uh, only responded to Ji Hyuk. Yes, Mr. Yu. I'm going in the same direction. You should get in the car. She frowned. You just said you have plans. They're finished. I have an appoint I have an appointment near your home. Ji Hyuk opened the passenger side door. Can I really get in? Jiwan hesitated. Ji Hyuk nodded at the car. Get in. I'll take you home, Jiwan, Unho said. The moment he did, she made up her mind. Jiwan climbed into the passenger seat of Ji Hyuk's car. Slam. Ji Hyuk shut the door a bit hard. Wait, Jiwan, Jiwan, Unho frantically, frantically tapped on the window. Getting in the driver's seat, Ji Hyuk pressed the gas as if he didn't see him. Hey, Jiwan, check your social media profile. Unho's voice carried faintly through the closed car doors. Huh. Jiwan sighed and leaned back in the seat, drained. Then she sprang back up, realizing where she was. Should I really allow this? You're always driving me home now. Just accept the ride. The traffic light changed. Ji Hyuk came to stop, came to a stop and glanced at Ji Wan, then quickly turned to the front again. What is he doing? Ji Wan tilted her head, then glimpsed her own ref reflection in the side mirror. Do I look weird? She thought she looked okay when she got ready earlier. She suddenly felt self-conscious about her exposed arms and the off-shoulder blouse. Do I look weird? She asked timidly. At that moment, the light changed and the car started again. Ji Hyuk did not respond. Did he not hear? More embarrassed than ever, Ji Wan tried not to look at the side mirror. Instead, she looked out the window. The road from Gangnam to Gangbuk was suddenly was busy on Sunday afternoon. The car's interior was still warm thanks to the sun's rays, even without the heater on. She had drained herself that morning, trying to put on makeup, or maybe the warm sun and quiet thrum of the radio did it. Either way, Juwan relaxed suddenly. Exhaustion crept over her. Don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. But the more she resisted, the heavier her eyelids grew. Soon, Juwan's pale shoulders rose and fell in a steady rhythm. Miss Kang? Ji Hyuk called. Juwan was so deep asleep that she didn't wake up. Ji Hyuk lowered the volume of the radio. 
The announcer stated the five o'clock traffic report in a softer voice. The early setting sun drew a cold, drew a gold curtain around the car. Peacefully breathe, peaceful breathing filled the air. For once, the slow-moving traffic didn't frustrate him in the slightest. Ji Hyuk took off his jacket and covered Ji Won with it. After quite some time he pa had passed, Ji Won suddenly burst awake and covered her mouth with a gasp. Oh my gosh, how long was I asleep? The first thing she saw when she opened her eyes was a street light. It had been late afternoon when she got into the car. Now bright street lights illuminated the dark night street. Night sky. Are you awake? Ji Hyuk glanced at Ji Won, his back to the windshield. I'm sorry, I was so tired. What time is it? Ji Won fumbled with her seatbelt. Only then did she register that Ji Hyuk had covered her in his suit jacket. She must have slept like a baby wrapped in a blanket. Her face flushed. It's a little past eight, he said. I slept for three over three hours? Yes. Her chest tightened. What about your schedule? You said you had things to do. Did you wait for me the entire time? Jiwon wanted to cry at the same time. A tiny bit of resentment surged in her chest. This is why I didn't want to get in the car, Mr. Yu. I waited because my appointment was canceled anyway. So, and I'm also tired. I guess I must have fallen asleep too. He didn't look like he'd just woken up. Jiwon doubted him, but the present circumstances didn't allow her to question him. She awkwardly returned his jacket and clicked the open her seatbelt. Clicked. What? What is that? Clicked open her seatbelt. Okay. Wait. Just then, Ji Hyuk touched the back of Ji Won's hand. Just a moment. Ji Won froze, flustered and surprised. She stopped breathing, like someone had pressed pause on her. Ji Hyuk's hand weighed heavily on her own, firm and strong. In front of your apartment. Ji Hyuk, Jin, oh my gosh, Ji Hyuk signaled with his eyes. Oh shit, who about to be in front of my girl's apartment? <laughs> Ji Won raised her head and followed his gaze. A familiar silhouette paced back and forth under the orange street light. She couldn't see his face, but she recognized the way he struck his hand and stuck his hand in his pockets and his habit of tapping the ground with his foot. Min Won. She didn't know what to think. Min Wan came here frequently, of course, but why would Ji Hyuk stop her from seeing him? No, why would Ji Hyuk help her avoid Min Wan? Why are you telling Why are you telling me not to leave, Mister Yu? She asked. Just because. At Ji Hyuk, at work, Ji Hyuk never gave vague responses like just because. He must have realized that too, because after a moment he spoke again. It seems like you've been avoiding him lately. I thought you might not want to face him. Me? Were you not? Ji Hyuk countered. He noticed. Ji Won studied Ji Hyuk's profile with bewilderment. Ji Hyuk was still watching Min Won, who lurked under the street light. His eyes under his horn rimmed glasses grew weary. Can you let go of me? Ji Won wiggled her fingers. Ji Hyuk flinched and removed his hand. Strangely, his ears appeared red. It's probably because of the street lights. Ji Won dug through her bag and found her phone. The moment she flipped it open, Ji Hyuk shook his head. He'll be able to see your face if you turn on a light inside the car. Ji Won started and swiftly shut her phone again. So you are avoiding him. <laughs> she couldn't think of a response. Ji Won just hoped this moment would end soon. It was even more awkward than their elevator ride. Every minute felt like an hour. Aren't you uncomfortable? Ji Hyuk asked finally. Feeling guilty, Ji Won forced a smile. Why would I feel uncomfortable? We're colleagues. Ji Hyuk, who had been staring straight ahead, narrowed his eyes at Ji Won. I was asking about your clothes. The silence had been so uncomfortable that Ji Won forgot about her tight skinny jeans. Her legs were swollen because of how long she'd been sitting. Her skin couldn't breathe in these clothes either. Oh, a little bit. Ji Hyuk muttered something, but the sound of a passing car buried it. What did you say, Mr. Yu? Mr. Park is heading home. He pointed at the parking lot. Sure enough, Min Won climbed into his car. Soon, a white mid-sized sedan left the parking lot and disappeared in the opposite direction. At the same time, Ji Won's phone vibrated. Bzz, bzz. Ji Won hesitated, holding her bag. Are you going to answer? 
Unlike in the past, Ji Hyuk was asking a lot of, about her personal life. Ji Won shook her head, uncomfortable at this sudden forwardness. I'll head up now. Thank you for the ride. Ji Won got out of the car. The moment she entered her cozy home, all the tension in her body melted. Whew, I almost died from discomfort. She had felt on edge all day. Now Ji Won stripped off her skinny jeans and blouse and took a shower. Back in a loose dress and her glasses, she felt like she could finally breathe. Bzz. Her phone rang again. Zoom in this time. Hello? She answered in an intentionally casual tone. Hello, Jiwan. Where are you? Why couldn't I get in touch with you? I fell asleep when I got home. I just woke up. Mr. Park said you weren't at home, though, so those two had already called each other. I didn't know Min Wong came by, so I, I was so tired. I slept like the dead, Jiwan replied. I see. Suman hesitated. Jiwan could almost see her expression. Uh, Jiwan, so... Go ahead. It was obvious she was going what she was going to say. I talked to the girls. There must have been some confusion back in our high school days. Whatever they said, it wasn't what I meant back then. They must have misunderstood me. <laughs> How are you always the same, Jiwan thought. <sighs> it's not what you're thinking, Jiwan. I've never thought of Inho as anything more than a friend. You know I turned him down, right? Suman asked. The problem is you never thought of me as a friend. But she kept her voice warm. Of course, I know that. I don't believe what those girls said. We're friends. Who would I trust if I didn't trust you? Right, Jiwan? We're best friends until we die. Suman's voice brightened. Don't die, though, okay? We're friends. Best friends. Best friends? Suman had said that right before Jiwan died. What a horrifying phrase. Definitely, Jiwan said. I left early because I thought I was making things awkward. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Everyone was asking where you went. Oh, right. You look so pretty today. Why didn't you tell me you were going to dress up? Miss Yu chose the outfit for me. I wanted to surprise you. I didn't know there would be so many people, Jiwon sighed. Uh, are you being too friendly with Miss Yu lately? Suman is sad. Jiwon could picture Suman's pout. She closed her eyes and composed herself until she managed to fake a natural voice again. We met up because she said she would buy me food to repay me for my help. I need to go shower now. I'll text you later. Okay, see you tomorrow, Jiwon. As soon as Jiwon shut her phone, she plopped onto her bed. Too many things had happened today. Her head swam just then. She remembered what Unho said as she left the reunion. Hey, Jiwon, check your social media profile. Why? <clears throat> Jiwon sat up and opened her laptop. Since the day she made the account, she had never logged in. Just looking at the screen made her nauseous. A photo of her and Suman was her profile picture. How ridiculous. She spotted a single message on her page. Suman Jiang, my other half. I love my best friend. My other half be damned. Jiwon sh shuddered and clicked on the menu. <laughs> Bulletin board, photo, album, diary. She saw nothing. Then she clicked on the visitor tab at the very bottom. What's this? Jiwan blinked. Unho Beck, Unho Beck, Unho Beck. Suman had visited her page first, but after that, Unho had visited her page over and over. You didn't come to the graduation ceremony. Did you sleep in? Anyway, congrats on graduating. Jiwan intentionally didn't attend the graduation ceremony because there had been a huge banner congratulating her on her acceptance to so Sogang University. Sagat, oh my gosh, because it's not how I want to say it. Sun Kun, Sung Kyun Hwan University, and Haiyang University. How are you doing these days? Suman says she can't get in contact with you either. We're adults now. We should meet up sometime. You don't know my number, do you? And then he put his number. Text me when you see this. After the first visit in 2002, Unho visited her page over twice a year. How soul? The air's different, isn't it? Haha. <laughs> You're really not reading me. So unfair. I'm leaving for military service. Leave me a reply as a present for when I get back. I became a sergeant. I must be, it must be about time for you to graduate. Congrats in advance. Attention, I, Sergeant Unho Beck, have been given orders to discharge, discharge from the army. Going to Seoul tomorrow. Let's meet up when I get there. The last visit was recent, dated yesterday. 
I heard we've been, we're having a reunion in Gangnam tomorrow. Are you coming? I'll go if you do, and I won't if you won't, if you don't. Why is he messaging me like this? Unho clicked, Ju Jiwon clicked on Unho's profile, feeling baffled. He had hundreds of messages from friends on his page on the single picture he posted with the basic caption, memories. There were endless comments until Jiwon, who was, unlike Jiwon, who was always alone, Unho lived in a completely different world from their very first meeting to the present. Oh, dang, that's the end of the chapter. I bet Suman did something that made Unho reject Jiwon for, oh, of course, of course. Mr. Yu is starting to make moves. He, he is making moves. Polite moves, but he's making moves. Everyone is asking where you went. My behind. Just accept the fact that everyone left you behind because that's exactly why a manipulative liar like you deserves. Ooh. True. Just true. <laughs> All right. So we're done with chapter 16 and we're going to be doing chapter 17 titled Unho Beck. See you then. Hey, we're back for chapter 17 of the web novel Marry My Husband and this is this title sorry this chapter is titled Unho Bake Jiwon met Unho in her first year of high school he stood out ever since their articulation articulation ceremony all the students admired him, even some older upperclassmen. Jiwon had to sit next to the tallest boy in the class, Unho, because she was the tallest girl. She despaired. She didn't want any unnecessary attention. Around them, students had begun to bully Jiwon. Before that, she'd always been safe on the sidelines. Plus, her seat was right next to the hallway window. Crumpled paper, erasers, and bread wrappers flew through the always open window all the time. Jiwon, are you okay? I'll tell them to stop, Suman murmured. Jiwon forced a smile and told the teary-eyed Suman she was all right. Suman got along with their classmates just fine. Jiwon didn't want Suman to start getting bullied as well. How long had it been since the bullying began? Since you started hanging out with Suman's ass. It was the middle of their fifth, fifth period class on a warm spring day. When half of the students started to fall asleep, Unho wrote something in his textbook and slid it to Jiwon. You can sit on this side starting tomorrow. A warm breeze fluttered through the open window. The white curtains billowed as if struck by powerful winds. Slowly, the fabric settled back down. After they changed seats, the trash tossed at Jiwon occasionally hit Unho's head. Unho always threw it back and cursed. Soon, the projectiles decreased. From then on, Jiwon came to enjoy sitting beside Unho. Changing seats was a very small gesture, but she was grateful. She started to get excited about going to school. For three straight years, they carried on that way. <clears throat> but then Suman encouraged Jiwon to confess how she felt. Jiwon wrote a letter to Unho. The day after she hid it in his cubby, Unho glared at Jiwon with a revolting frown. She'd never seen that expression before. This is how you've thought of me all this time, he'd muttered. Jiwon's face flushed, her heart twisted, and tears came out of, instead of words, she ran away. Then she pretended to be sick for the first time in her life and avoided school for a week. Suman called her. Jiwon sobbed as she confessed everything that had happened. Suman listened to everything, Jiwon said. Then she hesitated and spoke in a tiny voice. Um, Jiwon, I'm really sorry. Actually, Unho confessed to me. This fucking bitch. You imagine in high school how that would feel? Fucking evil. I fucking can't stand this girl. Jiwon's heart sank. Her tears stopped falling, though. But I turned him down. I told him we're just friends. Jiwon. Still, I told him we're just friends, Jiwon. Still, I thought I should tell you. <sighs> it's okay. Thanks for telling me. She barely managed to force the words out. 
The door to her heart shut even tighter. After that, Unho tried to initiate a few conversations. He even, even slid a note to her in class, but every time Jiwon turned away or left, she didn't ever want to feel that pathetic or hurt again. With that, Jiwon's puppy love ended, or at least she thought it had, but why? Jiwon reread Unho's message again and again. She would feel more comfortable if the messages sneered or mocked her. However, no matter how negatively she tried to look at this, the content seemed far from insulting. And then there's Unho's phone number. Unho left that number on her profile in early 2003. Was it still the same? Most people had 010 numbers now. His is 018. Jiwon typed the number into her phone and stared at it for over 10 minutes. Mustering her courage, she clicked the call button. Half of her hope she'd hear uh, a number, this number does not exist message. The other half, half desperately hoped Unho would answer. Hello, someone said. She recognized Unho's voice at once. Her pulse skipped, but she didn't know where to begin. She moved to hang up. Hello, Jiwon? The sound of her name froze her. It's you, isn't it, Jiwon? How does he know? Jiwon took a small breath and opened her mouth. Yeah, it's me. I knew it. Without his dialect, Unho sounded less familiar, a little softer. Did you just see the visits now? You never logged into, onto social media all this time? No need. I barely even remembered my password, she said. Yeah, I thought so. I guess it was still worth leaving them, though. He sounded so casual, as if everything in their past had been wiped clean. I thought you might have changed your number since it's been so long. It would have been the same even if you called me later, he said. Oh, Why didn't you change your number, she asked. This isn't why I called Jiwon was slightly unnerved by how unnaturally the conversation flowed. Mm, I'll tell you that later. Jiwon could hear him smiling. She realized she was smiling too and quickly lowered the corners of her mouth. She called him for a reason. She had to ask what really happened back then. What didn't she know? Okay, tell me later. Actually, um, I called because I have something to ask you. Uh, in high school, let's talk in person. Where are you? I'll come there. Why? Her brain sought the reason, but her heart beat faster. You don't have to. It's too late. Then what about tomorrow? She clenched the phone tighter. It's not important enough to talk about in person. I'm not asking to meet just to talk about something important, although I do want to talk. Jiwon removed the phone from her ear and stared at her laptop. The visits Unho left on her profile remained on her screen. Okay. When and where tomorrow? I'll pick you up when you get off work. You work at UNK Food, right? She pressed her lips together. Call me when you get to the company headquarters, around six. Unho hesitated. Don't bring Suman. Come alone. See you tomorrow. Oh, he know. He know that bitch is shady. I wonder if he knew this whole time, like since high school. Suman, she blinked. Good night. He hung up before Jiwon could say anything else. Jiwon stuck her charger in the phone and lay back down, but she couldn't sleep, maybe because she had gotten some shut eye earlier. Rustling around in the sheets, she finally remembered Minwon around midnight. She lazily typed out a message to him. I met Suman and slept like the dead when I got home. I'll see you at work tomorrow. She didn't tell him goodnight as she had with Unho. It was revolting enough to send him any messages at all. Girl, she barely, girl, you barely wanted to do that and I don't blame you. Ugh, he's disgusting. I can't wait for those two to get together.
Jiwon woke up two hours earlier than usual on Monday morning. She didn't know how long it would take to put on her makeup, so she set her alarm extra early. She curled her hair and put in her contacts. After applying foundation on a makeup brush, as she learned at the salon, she pressed a thin layer on her face. She strained her hands, which trembled like a newly bathed puppy, <laughs> as she drew on her brows and eyeliner. Skinny jeans are too uncomfortable. After some deliberation, she chose the H-line skirt and blouse set with a handbag and a pair of low but charming heels. She was ready. But she had finished earlier than she'd expected. She walked slowly on purpose, but she still arrived at work 30 minutes too soon. I'm running early. Well, there's nothing better than ice Americana on an empty stomach. Her feet changed directions towards the cafe in the front of the building. Ding! The bell over the door chimed, but no one was waiting at the crowner. Where are they? Jiwon tapped her foot, looking for the employees. Not long after this, the door opened with a chime again. She spun around, but instead of an apron-wearing employee, she found herself facing Ji Hyuk. She quickly bowed. Oh, Mr. Yu, are you here to buy coffee? Ji Hyuk froze just inside the door, but only for a split second. Then he strolled up to her. Mr. Yu, did he not hear me over the music? Jiwon squinted at Ji Hyuk's face and pulled out her wallet. Since you took me home yesterday, coffee's on me. Um, iced Americano, right? Ji Hyuk furrowed his brows. <laughs> Jiwon recognized that expression. He was upset. Does the skirt look horrible on me? Jiwon shifted, embarrassed. Miss Kang, Ji Hyuk said. Just then, an employee appeared behind the counter. I'm sorry, what would you like to order? Two iced Americanos for takeout. I'm not a member of the loyalty program. Jiwon held out her card and received a pager. Can we sit down to wait? Miss, can we sit down to wait, Mr. Yu? My feet hurt. Ji Hyuk lowered his gaze to Jiwon's feet. <laughs> Jiwon's embarrassment deepened. Her skirt felt too tight. Yes. Jiwon followed Ji Hyuk to a nearby table and sat across from him. He wasn't even looking at Jiwon anymore. What were you trying to say earlier? Jiwon asked. The pager buzzed in her hand. Oh, the coffee. Let's drink it here. Ji Hyuk stood up and fetched the coffee. Jiwon felt anxious, like she'd done something wrong. She flashed back to the incident in the elevator when Ji Hyuk had insulted her earrings. She feared another repeat. Miss Kang. Ji Hyuk had said, looking, looking in as bad a mood then as he appeared now. Yes, Mr. Yu, that. The earrings? Suman? I mean, Miss Jong gave them to me. They really don't suit you. After that, Ji Won couldn't bring herself to wear the earrings. It was too minor an occurrence to call it trauma, but it still never left her mind since I came back to the past. Girly. <laughs> I would not have worn that either. I'd have been like, noted, noted. I am not wearing those hideous things again. <laughs> Unless I actually liked them, then I'd be like, fuck you, <laughs> I'm gonna wear these. <laughs> Jiwon mustered her courage. She would ask if the outfit suited her before Ji Hyuk could bring it up. Mr. Yu, go ahead, Ji Hyuk responded. His gaze remained fixed on the counter. Are my new clothes weird? I picked them out with Miss Yu over the weekend. Ji Hyuk's eyebrows twitched. A moment of silence passed. It was only a few seconds, but it felt as long as a Wednesday afternoon to Ji Won. It's not that they don't suit you, just... Ji Hyuk cleared his throat. <clears throat> it's inappropriate to wear to work. She frowned. At least five out of ten women come to work dressed like this, though. Is that so? Was he asking because he didn't know? Or was he pretending not to know? It was probably the latter. Their office didn't have many women, but he must have seen the lobby filled with employees dressed like Jiwon. Can you just say it doesn't suit me? You said that about my earrings too, she said. The earrings really didn't suit you, Ji Hyuk responded immediately. immediately. Jiwon was surprised at the speed of his response. Oh, Yes, they really didn't suit me. Yes. 
Jiwon lost all motivation to speak to him now. She would feel more comfortable talking, <laughs> taking her coffee to the office and working. Should we uh, head back? Yes. Ji Hyuk stood up. Jiwon followed, adjusting her skirt. Ding! Just then the door opened and Min Wan strolled inside. The moment he entered, he stared at Jiwon. His forehead, forehead bunched up in a deep frown. Jiwon? Min Wan. Min Wan gazed at Jiwon, doubting his eyes. At first, he hadn't even recognized her. He'd only stared because the woman in the cafe had looked up so close to his ideal type. Only when he'd only when she'd walked towards him had he real realized it was Jiwon without her glasses. Your style changed. The way she smiled shyly was pretty too. You said I looked pretty without my glasses, so I bought some contacts. Jiwon donned a nervous expression and asked if she looked strange. Minwon shook his head and grinned. He forgot all about being mad because Jiwon went off the grid yesterday. No, I was surprised. I was surprised because you look so pretty, but why is that punk with you? Minwon glared at Ji Hyuk, then smiled at Ji Won again. Don't come to work like that. Ji Won frowned. Why? Does it look weird on me? No, I'm scared other bastards will come on to you, he said. I'm talking about you, Ji Hyuk, you. Minwon nodded at Ji Hyuk and made a shadow, made a show of wrapping his arm around Ji Won's shoulders. You're drinking an Americano so early in the morning. Did you have breakfast? I had soy milk at home, he guessed. Yeah, Jiwon replied as she removed Minwan's arm from her shoulders. Let's, let's go in. Oh, you're going to buy some coffee, right? It's fine. I'll get it during lunch. Minwan scanned his employee card and entered the elevator hall with Jiwon. All the other men glanced Jiwon up and down, which gave Minwon a sense of superiority. All except one, that damn Ji Hyuk. Not that Ji Hyuk acted inappropriately, per se. He and Jiwon spoke occasionally, but only ever about work related things. Still, Minwon, Minwon's manly instincts told him that Ji Hyuk wanted Jiwon. He caught Ji Hyuk's shadow reflected in the elevator door. Know your place, lower than me. Minwan thought, inwardly smirking. Pfft. When Minwan's perspective, from Minwan's perspective, everything about Ji Hyuk was pathetic. The same suit he always wore, the thick tie he kept on, even in summer, his shoddy hair, and his old fashioned horn rim glasses. If it was already annoying enough to see that loser, it was already annoying enough to see that loser get promoted to department head. Now he's gunning for my girlfriend? I'd punch him in the face if not for work. The elevator arrived, a rush of people boarded, and Minwan shielded Jiwon with his arms. The familiar scent of Jiwon's shampoo hit differently today. Soon the door opened on the eighth floor. Ji Hook strolled off. Jiwon followed him. Strangely, it felt like Jiwon is escaping from him, but Minwan shook off the feeling as a figment of his imagination. Damn! And that's the end of chapter 17. Let's see what the top comments were. <laughs> Minwan is like a broken clock that gets at least two things right. Yes, Mr. Yu has feelings for not your girlfriend. And yes, she is fleeing from you like a mouse on a sinking ship. <laughs> I like that analogy. <clears throat> Minwan, you lost all right to be jealous over her the moment you clearly began favoring Suman. True that. It is kind of disturbing how Minwan acts nice only when Jiwon wears contacts and looks prettier than normal. Exactly. Ah, but he's a piece of shit, I guess. But that is it for... Chapter 17, um, I thought we might get more from Unho, but the next chapter is con also called Unho Beck. So we'll see. We'll see what happens when they meet up. I'm excited to know. But thank you so much for watching or mostly listening to my video. I really appreciate it. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up. 
um, leave a comment. If you don't know what to comment, uh, post glasses because Juwan is not wearing her glasses anymore. Or heels. I don't know. Just emoji. I don't care. <laughs> but um, thank you so much. And I hope I see you in the next video. Bye. Okay. It's me, AFC. And we're back with chapter 18 of the web novel, Marry My Husband. And this is titled Un Home Back 2. <laughs> I think I said last chapter I was done. No, 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 no. We're going to put all these suckers together. Maybe all the way up to chapter 20. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I'll be back after using the bathroom. Jiwon said, can you leave my coffee on my desk? Sure. Jiwon left her coffee with Minwon and disappeared into the bathroom. Minwon took a sip as if it was his coffee. Then he entered the office and spotted Ji Hyuk on his way inside. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Yu, you're just getting here? Minwon asked. Yeah, did you sleep in? Another employee teased. Surprisingly, Ji Yong Uk was also at work already. He nudged Ji Hyuk's shoulder, shoulders. This is the first time. I've, this is the first time I've seen you come in so late, Mr. Yu. It's been a while since I've seen you come in early, Mr. Kim. <gasps> Damn, that roast was just so easy breezy. <laughs> Ji Hyuk walked past him. Ji Jun Uk scratched the back of his balding head and sat at it in his chair. Mr. Park, what about Miss Kang? Is she not here yet? Joran asked, looking behind Minwon. The only thing on Jiwon's desk was a half-drunk cup of coffee. No bag or jacket. She's just using the bathroom. Oh, here she comes, he nodded. Just then, Jiwon stepped in. Joran's eyes widened when she saw her. Good morning. Every eye in the room focused on Jiwon. Joan Oak's mouth dropped open so wide it looked like he was about to start drooling. Good morning, Suman yipped as she entered. Then she jerked to a stop at the entrance. Hu Yan had been walking at a full tilt past her. When Suman stopped, Hu Yan's bag, <laughs> shoulder bag smacked Suman in the head. Ow! But Suman's shriek was buried by Hu Yan's squeals. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, Miss Kang! What's this? Hu Yan was proud of her handbag. But Suman didn't, <laughs> Suman didn't matter right now. Yu Yan hurried to Jiwon's side. You've become a different person over the weekend. Where did Miss Kang go? I don't know who chose your blouse, but they have a keen eye. Your hair is so pretty too. <laughs> Joran came dashing over too. Oh my gosh, Miss Kang, you're so beautiful. Why did you hide your pretty face all this time, hmm? Jiwon covered her red face with her new bag. I'm just wearing contacts. Pretty face my foot. She went to sit down, pleased and uncomfortable at the same time. Have you always had such a great body? You're tall, skinny, and you're a great employee. You've got it all. I didn't know you were so selfish, Joran teased. Hu Yan fiddled with Jiwon's long wavy hair. I thought we hired a new employee. Here I was thinking I'd finally not be the youngest anymore. <laughs> the noisy fuss around Jiwon all but pushed Suman aside. Suman ended up plopping into her chair without a single person greeting her. I was already feeling like crap. Almost none of her friends replied to her calls or messages. The few who did answer only did so begrudgingly. <laughs> so what? Who cares if they what they think? Suman gritted her teeth and typed furiously on her phone. Opa, no one said hi to me when I came to work. I'm getting bullied again. She pressed send. The response came at once. Hey, stop chit-chatting over there. Did you come to the office to work or to gossip? Ji Young Uk bellowed. <gasps> Damn, that's a 180 on that ass. I love it. <laughs> I love it.
Zuman felt a tad better. Uh, Zuman felt a tad bit better as Hu Yian and Joran hurried to their seats. You didn't have to do that, but thanks, Juyang Uk Opa. She was feeling a generous. She was feeling generous and added a heart after the word Opa. Of course, I can do this much for you. How are you feeling? Suman had been unreachable on Saturday evening. She called him late in the afternoon on Sunday, saying she'd been as sick as a dog. John Uk, who said he'd be right over with some medicine, but Suman insisted he stay home. She said it was the weekend. He was probably tired, too. Suman is getting bullied because she's so nice and pretty. Joan Uk shook his head and glared at Hugh Yeon. Nearby, Suman typed a reply. I was feeling better thanks to you, but I feel sick again after coming to work. Miss Yu and Miss Yang are so scary. If it's the last thing I do, your future husband will make at least one of them quit, thought Joan Uk. In his deluded mind, he is Delulu, <laughs> he and Suman were already married with three kids. He bent over his phone. Let me know any time you want to take this afternoon off. I'm on your side. Don't be too sad. You can do it, my pretty Suman. Suman flashed a smile at Yong Uk through the partition. Yong Uk offered a wide tooth smile in response, so hideous that she almost screamed. Anyway, how did Jiwon lose her mind? Suman's eyes narrowed. Jiwon had changed so much since Saturday. She'd always had the fashion sense of a worm, happy to wear the cheap 3,000 won scarf Suman had once given her. Clearly, Yu Yeon had influenced her heavily during their shopping trip on Saturday. Great body? Jiwon has it all? Pretty? How fake. Yu Yeon probably thinks Jiwon's clothes are too nice for someone as thin as a twig. Suman couldn't get anything done all morning because she was trying to contain her boiling temper. She decided to tell the bald guy to punish everyone for her so she could stop worrying. Monday morning, morning passed quickly. At lunchtime, Joran and Hu Yian raced, raced to Jiwan's desk. Let's go, Miss Kang. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. There are rumors that today's menu is stir-fried tofu. If so, I'm going to tell the chef I love her, Hu Yian joked. Suman arrived a beat late. She tugged at Jiwan's neck until Jiwan bent low enough for Suman to whisper to her. Go eat without me. I'm going to rest in the office. I don't feel too well. Okay. Jiwan straightened after removing Suman's arm. She didn't even ask if Suman was all right. Minwan, who jumped up from his desk, didn't even glance at Suman. The women are eating to that together. Can I join? The words, go stuff yourself with Suman, hovered on the tip of Jiwan's tongue. <laughs> But she managed to rein them in with supernatural willpower. We need to have some girl talk. Go join the men's world, Mr. Park, she said. Min Wan was unaccustomed to Ji Wan's refusing him, but he still looked happy. Suman returned to her seat in disgust and hunched over her desk. She really felt like she was going to be sick. Be sick, bitch. Don't nobody give a fuck. 5.55 p.m. The time when the dead eyes of salarymen and women started to sparkle again. Jiwon typed loudly and made noisy clicks with her mouse, pretending she wasn't done with work. <laughs> she would rather leave a bit later to meet Unho than leave early and be subjected to her colleague's stares. You're working overtime, Minwon asked. He looked disappointed. Yeah, I couldn't focus today, and I had a lot left, she replied. Do it tomorrow. I'll help you, he smiled. She didn't return it. But you're not going to be in the office tomorrow. Should I wait for you then? I can make. I can take you home, he suggested. I don't know when I'll be done. Aren't you supposed to go to the gym today, she asked, hoping he'd get lost. Minwan scratched the back of his head. Uh, then I'll get going. Text me when you're leaving. Success. Jiwan nodded, her gaze still focused on her monitor. Let's all clock out, everyone. Ji Hyuk's voice rang out at 5.59 at the sound. The workers leapt up like springs, their rapid motions contrary to their slow movements in the morning. Good work, everyone, Ji Hyuk called. I'm clocking out, one employee announced. See you tomorrow. Keep it up, Miss Kang. After the parade of various goodbyes, the office, em office emptied. Jiwan stopped randomly typing and yawned. So tired. As if in response, her phone rang. Hello? It's me, Unho. I know. There wasn't anything funny about this, but Unho started chuckling. Are you off work yet? I'm in front of your company's building. Not here. There's a star cafe two blocks away. Let's meet there.
Won't your feet hurt? He asked. It's fine. Just give me 15 minutes. Jiwon hung up, dug through her bag for lipstick, then grabbed the hand mirror on her desk. The moment she raised it, a black shadow appeared behind her. Ah! <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> what the heck? Jiwon calmed her racing heart and whipped around. Ji Hyuk gazed down at her, one hand in his pocket, and the other holding a bag of documents. Why are you so surprised? Why are you surprising people from behind? She countered. I came to ask if you were leaving, but you were on the phone. Jiwon felt embarrassed about yelping. She quickly packed her makeup pouch and stood. I'm leaving now. Have a good night, sir. Jiwon's high heels clicked and echoed in the empty hallway. Ji Hyuk followed her and stopped in front of the elevator. It sounds like you have plans. Yes. She felt he was going to offer her a ride again. Ji Won intentionally kept her gaze on the elevator. Which way are you headed? He asked. She cleared her throat. We, we, made, plan we made plans to meet nearby. Are you walking? Yes. Ji Hyuk frowned. You were barely able to stand this morning because of your shoes. I'm fine now. I only need to walk a little bit. She shrugged. I see. So he hadn't planned to offer her a ride. She felt embarrassed again. Maybe she went too far. See you tomorrow, Mr. Yu, Jiwon said as she hurried off the elevator first. Her feet already felt swollen from wearing the heels all day. Maybe I should have taken a ride from him, even though it'd be uncomfortable. Had it been about three or four times since she left the lobby? Oh, had it been about three or four minutes since she left the lobby? Belated regret washed over her. Then she heard a honk. Could it be? The window of a black sedan rolled down as she heard, slowly turned around. Hop in. I saw how you stumbled. Don't be calling me out like that, sir, but I love you. Thank you. <laughs> That's not what she said. That's me. If I was her, because I understand the pain. Okay. <clears throat> You girlies, you us girlies know, okay, if you haven't worn heels in a while, your feet be screaming, okay? Alrighty. <laughs> <clears throat> Hop in, I saw you stumble, how you stumbled, Ji Hyuk said. She couldn't argue with that. She had stumbled and her feet ached. She still had 10 minutes left to walk and there were no taxis at rush hour. Left with no choice, Ji Won climbed into Ji Hyuk's car. I'm going to the Star Cafe two blocks down, but I feel bad for getting rides from you like this. It's fine. Before long, the car stopped in front of the coffee shop. Jiwon quickly unfastened her seatbelt. Wait here just a minute, Mr. Yu. I don't want to feel indebted to him. I should buy him a coffee, at least. She hurried into the cafe and immediately spotted Unho by the window. Hang on, let me order a coffee quickly. I'll get it. Where are you drinking? Unho pulled out his wallet and stood next to her at the counter. It's okay. I'm buying a coffee for my department head because he dropped me off. Two grande iced Americanos, please. Fortunately, the coffee came out quickly. Jiwon left one cup with Unho and carried the other outside. Mr. Yu. Ji Hyuk was leaning on his car with his arms crossed. What is this? I felt bad about all the rides you've given me. Here's a drink on your for your way home. Jimon held out the coffee with a smile. However, Ji Hyuk didn't take it. His gaze was fixed behind her. Jiwon turned around, wondering what he was looking at, and blinked. She could understand why Unho gave a light nod to Ji Hyuk, but why was Ji Hyuk glaring at Unho, his eyes blazing? She shifted to block Unho from Ji Hyuk's sight. Mr. Cough, <laughs> your coffee, Mr. Yu. Please take this and leave. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> he must have heard Ji Wan's internal pleas because Ji Hyuk accepted the coffee. I just remembered. Pardon? She asked. Something work related. I'm sorry, but please check your email within an hour, Ji Hyuk said. So suddenly? Thank you, Miss Kang. With that, Ji Hyuk got back into his car and left. It was a little past six. He just told her to check her email by 7.30. 7.30. Smartphones didn't exist yet, so Ji Wan would have no choice but to hurry home soon. Okay.
there, bro. I see you. I see you. <laughs> to, uh, to hurry home soon to take care of the task. Sorry, did you wait long? Ji Yuan returned to the cafe and sat down. It's only been 15 minutes. Unho flashed a grin. His slightly mischievous smile hadn't changed a bit since high school. His white shirt and black jeans reminded Ji Wan of their high school uniform. You haven't changed in the slightest, Unho. Neither have you, he smiled. She almost choked on her coffee. Ji Wan coughed and wiped her mouth with a tissue. Are you okay? Unho asked, concerned. Did it go down the wrong way? Oh yeah, I'm fine. Jiwan waved him off. She'd let her tight ponytail down into voluminous waves, and she'd traded her oversized school uniform for an H-line skirt and blouse. She wore contacts, not glasses, and even her dry lips were coral-colored. Yet Unho said she hadn't changed a bit. Either he had a problem with his memory, or he just said that without really meaning it. Jiwan, Jiwan assumed the latter. I'm being serious. What's with your reaction? Unho asked with a frown. She shrugged. A lot of people told me I've changed. You look the same to me. Unho sounded genuine. You're pretty. Mmm, slick, smooth. Jiwan suspected she misheard. What? You're pretty. You were pretty back then, and you still are. He stared at her, completely serious. Jiwan wondered what kind of nonsense he was spewing. After a moment of silence, Unho added something that left her even more bewildered. That's why your department head, that department head of yours is chasing you. Oh. <laughs> Not an ending right there. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Okay. <laughs> so we got to wait for the next chapter to unlock. That was so good. Uh, I didn't read the, I didn't read the comments. Hang on, hang on. Let me click back on that again. Uh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> Now, if only Jihook would confess already and stop making it seem like he doesn't care when it's obvious he does. Eye roll emoji. Like, right? Like, bruh, come on now. <laughs> I'm glad Unho had some sense, but if you're telling her she's pretty now, why was he just so disgusted by her in the past? My theory is that Suman told lies about her to Unho. Maybe that she was a stalker or something, and that's why he flipped out. Then he realized afterwards that Suman was lying to him and he and had tried to get in contact with Jiwon ever since then to apologize or not. I don't know. Yeah, I want to know what happened. What did she do? Because we know Suman's involved somehow. And then why wasn't this included in the webtoon so much? So much gets lost. It, yes, it does. It does. But this is so good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Okay. So that's it for chapter 18. Um, I'll be back with chapter 19 soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, have a good one. Bye. Hey, it's Ashley and I'm back with chapter 19 of the web novel of Marry My Husband. Let's get into it. Okay. So chapter 19, Beauty from back then. <laughs> That's why the department head of yours is chasing you. Jiwan thanked her lucky stars that she didn't have any coffee in her mouth. If she had, she would have spit it in Inho's face. She struggled to force a smile. 
her mouth frozen in surprise. Wow, you're full of nonsense now that you're an adult. And her eyebrows furrowed. You know, you didn't know? There's nothing to know. Nothing's going on between us, not over my dead body. Technically, she had died and come back to life. So more Im impossible things have happened. But stiff Ji Hyuk couldn't like anyone, much less Ji Won. Then you don't have any feelings for him? Is it one sided? Unho studied Ji Won's expression. No one's chasing anyone. Nothing's one sided. He's just my boss. Ji Won quenched her newfound thirst with a gulp of coffee. <laughs> I see you're still dense. Damn, <laughs> Damn bro. <laughs> <laughs> then he grinned I don't have a girlfriend what does he want me to say Jiwon contemplated <laughs> whether she should have she should congratulate or pity him I see that's all you have to say he asked sitting in the cafe with Unho left felt like a test of her intelligence Jiwon contemplated some more I'm sure you'll find someone soon. Someone? Like who? Unho still wore a serious expression. He sat next, right next to her, just like he had in high school, in a white shirt that reminded her of their school uniform. I don't know. Look around you. Jiwon waved a hand. I already found her. Unho rested his chin on his hand. My high school crush. Forgotten emotions welled in Jiwon's chest. Excitement, nervousness, happiness, and embarrassment. Her heart suddenly turned cold like someone had poured ice water on it. That's in the past, she said. It's true, I used to like you, but no. Unho cut her off. You're my crush. Unho Bake liked Jiwon Kang. Jiwon's thoughts whirled to a halt. Unho made it his mission to make fun of me today. Your prank has your pranking has gone too far. Pranking? Unho pulled two phones from his pocket. One was a brand new phone that even had a touch screen, and the other was an old black sliding phone. Jiwon doubted still worked. It's been seven years since we graduated. I kept this phone on me anyway, just waiting for you to contact me. Do I look disturbed enough to invest seven years into a prank? Okay. Okay. That, that, that's not a prank. <laughs> Jiwon blinked. It was impossible. How can someone like him in a completely different world have feelings for someone like me? I couldn't give up on you. Even though you told me off so harshly, I decided to keep waiting until this phone stopped working. Then yesterday... Unho rubbed his forehead, then took a small breath. I heard it when I was outside the bathroom at the reunion. You liked me back then, too. Ooh, we're going back in the past. The first day of high school, after they were assigned seats, Unho met Jiwon. Hi. Sorry. Hi. Unho greeted her with a mischievous smile. He pulled over a chair to sit down. Jiwon glanced at Unho and turned back to her problems or problem sets. In that split sec in that split second, Unho read Jiwon's mind. I'm doomed. It's strange enough that she's solving problem sets on the first day, but what's with that expression? Unho felt very flustered. He'd never been treated like this, but he attempted to start fresh and introduce himself. I'm Unho Bake. You're Jiwon Kang, right? She didn't even glance at him this time. She just completely ignored him. I got unlucky, Unho sighed. At this school, once your seat was assigned, it remained your seat until the end of the year. Since seats were assigned by height, it was very likely he'd sit next to Jiwon for the next three years. On that uncomfortable first day of school, Jiwon didn't utter a single word, or at least not until a pretty looking girl suddenly hopped into the back of the classroom. Jiwon, our classrooms are right next to each other. It's a relief we're not too far apart, huh? Jiwon looked up from a, her, the problem set she'd been working and smiled at the girl. She was pretty when she smiled. Her eyes crinkled behind her glasses and her light pink lips parted to reveal white teeth. 
Unha watched the curve of her neck disappear into a neat ponytail, subconsciously staring. Noticing him, the new girl spoke up. I know you. You're Unho Beck, right? You're Jiwon C partner. Jiwon turned to Unho. The corners of her mouth were still lifted, and for a split second, it felt like her smile was for him. Uh, yeah, I am, he said. I'm Suman, Jiwon's best friend. We were split up in different homerooms. Take care of Jiwon for me, you got it? Don't say stuff like that. I Am I a baby? Jiwon grumbled to Suman. That was so cute. You stay still. Suman waved her off. Unho, you have a phone, right? Give me your number. You have to contact me immediately if something happens to Jiwon. Before he knew it, Unho found himself exchanging numbers with Suman. On the second day, Jiwon started getting bullied. Unho asked Suman about it. She said girls who liked him were jealous of Jiwon. Don't do anything, got it? Do you know how scary these girls are? You have to distance yourself from Jiwon. It's the only way things will get any better, she insisted. Afraid of making things worse, he tried not to engage too much with Jiwon. He did change seats with her, so the trash projectiles hit him instead. He got angry on her behalf. He came in early to erase the scribbles on her desk and returned her stolen textbooks and PE uniform to their rightful places. But with Suman's warning in his mind, he did it all covertly. Okay. For three years, Unho secretly had a crush on Jiwon, but Jiwon never gave him a second look. The only person who knew was Suman. He started feeling anxious at this rate. They would graduate and he'd lose his chance. Unho wrote a letter and gave it to Suman, who promised to give it to Jiwon for him. He didn't expect any reply. No, that was a lie. But he tried to expect anything so the disappointment wouldn't hurt less. But he did not expect anything. Wow. Okay, so he sent the letter with Suman. Okay, okay. All right. I got I got thoughts after this. Okay. So it's the opposite. Okay. <clears throat> when he found a letter in his cubby, he was overjoyed. He finally understood that cliche saying about feeling butterflies. Unho put the letter in his pocket and went to the bathroom. After taking three deep breaths, he carefully opened the envelope. A letter fell out. He immediately immediately recognized his own handwriting. It was a letter he'd written and rewritten countless times before he passed it along to Jiwon. I've liked you since the first day we were assigned to be seat desk partners. I'm sorry if this seems sudden, but I wanted to say this before graduating. Don't feel like you have to do anything about it. Still, if you want to give me a chance, write back. From Inho. Underneath his message, he spotted Jiwon's familiar handwriting. I already know. Since you told me, stop staring at me like a stalker now. It's so dirty and creepy. I think I'm going to barf. Jeez. Damn. His pumping heart froze over like ice. Unho folded the letter and put it back in the envelope. Oh my gosh. He almost crumpled it up and tossed it in the trash, but he couldn't bring himself to. What an idiot. He gripped the envelope in one hand. He didn't remember how he felt, the, how he left the bathroom, but in a cruel twist of fate, as soon as he reached the hallway, he ran in the Jiwon. Her face, emotionless like always, seemed crueler than ever. He scowled. He was mortified and miserable. This is how you've thought of me all this time? Jiwon spun around and ran away. Why does she look miserable? I'm the one about to cry. Why look at me in such distress? Unho smoothed out the envelope and put it in his pocket. He wasn't able to throw it away or burn it. Unho would always be an idiot and a loser when it came to his first love. Wow. After he finished their coffee, Jiwon refused. Unho's offer to take her home. Instead, she took the subway. It was past rush hour, but she saw heavy traffic on James Hill Bridge through the window. Her thoughts moved as slowly as the inching cars. After, oops, excuse me. <clears throat> After Unho told her his side of the story, she was reeling. She hadn't told him that the letter he received was a fake or that Suman wrote it because she had liked him too. It was just something I said because I didn't have anything else to say. I just wanted to get out of there, and I have a boyfriend now. 
She left things at that. The past was the past. She couldn't com complicate things or mess up her plans for the future. Unho seemed to have something else to say, but didn't. Let's be friends again, he, uh, he smiled mischievously. We can catch up, eat, and have a drink together. Friends do that, right? She was grateful for his consideration. He was a good person, not willing to make her uncomfortable. Would I have been happy if I married you? I'm pretty sure you would have. I'm pretty sure you would have been perfectly fine. If Suman would have allowed it. If you would have kept her in your life, I'm pretty sure you never would have got married. She probably would have drugged him and then slept with him. And made sure you ca caught her. Just like she did to you in the future. Or your previous life. The useless thought suddenly occurred to her. It was just one more reason why she couldn't forgive Suman. She couldn't understand her. And she didn't want to. Why ruin young puppy love? Why slowly gnaw away your life and push me to such a horrible end? People streamed out of the subway when it arrived at Konuk University Station. Jiwon joined the crowd and passed through the subway turnstile. Upon returning home, the first thing she did was open her laptop. However, her inbox was empty. She checked her spam folder and her personal email but saw no emails about work. That's weird. Jiwon pulled out her phone and pressed the call button. Jihyuk picked up as soon as the dial tone sounded. Yes, Ms. Kang? I just checked my mail, Mr. Yu. I didn't get anything from you. Did you not send it yet? She asked. Where are you? He asked. Jiwon responded after some hesitation. Home. I just got back. I took care of it, but I forgot to contact you. I apologize. Mr. Yu forgetting something? Jiwon fell speechless at the thought. That's why that department head of yours is chasing you, Unho whispered in the back of her mind. No way. It can't be. Absolutely not. But memories came flooding back. The way he insisted on taking her home, how he asked about Minwan, and the time he'd blocked Minwan's body with his when she'd been arguing with Minwan in the office. Um, Mr. Yu? Yes. Jiwan immediately regretted speaking. What are you going to do? Ask him if he likes you? Go ahead, Miss Kang. Ji Hyuk sounded as emotionless and dry as a desert. He doesn't like me. Of course he doesn't. She relaxed a fraction. It's nothing. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, rest up. The call ended just as quickly as it had begun. Jiwon stared at her quiet phone. Suddenly, she remembered the lipstick in Ji Hyuk's car. Right, he has a girlfriend. She felt completely at ease now. She didn't know much about Ji Hyuk, but she was certain he would never wander if he already had a girlfriend. Jiwon was about to turn off her laptop, but she logged into her social media account instead. She went to erase Suman's message on her page. Hmm. She absently clicked on the visits menu and tilted her head. One new private message had appeared. Oh, since the last time she checked. Leaving this here because I don't know your number. I'm sorry for harassing you after only listening to one side of the story. It might seem ridiculous to you that I'm apologizing now, but I'm being genuine. Everyone from our school cut ties with Suman. Yunhyu, Sina, and the other girls all regret how we treated you. I guess we can't ask you to forgive us. I just hope you know that we're all sorry. Leave me a reply if you forgive us someday. I want to apologize to you in person. From GA. Okay. All right, GA. Manning up. Did GA Han seriously write this? Jiwon clicked on the name to check the profile. It most definitely was her. What's going on? Jiwon blinked. Suman and GA were friends from the same homeroom. Suman got along with other friend groups too. After graduating, they became estranged. But after this reunion, all their soul schoolmates in Seoul had started hanging out with each other like in the past. Jiwon remembered being envious when Suman told her about everything she did with her old high school friends over the weekends. So that's what happened, she murmured. The past had changed again. At this reunion, Suman lost all her friends, so those friends came over to Jiwon. Did they really have a change of heart? She felt dubious. She didn't need friends. However, there was no need to build more walls. G1 
Jiwan left a short reply to Jie's visit. I never thought I received an apology like this. Thanks for telling me. I'll leave my number so you can contact me. And that's the end of chapter 19. Ding! Right when it was getting really good. Anywho. Thanks for listening. And we'll be back with chapter 20. Something with eyes in their armpits. Oh, sorry. I read that. Someone with eyes eyes in their armpits i've never heard that before that's crazy what kind of title is that <laughs> oh some of the comments what i don't get is why jiwan didn't give unho the truth when he was terribly hurt by suman's deception as well the reasoning that she didn't want to change the past is unreasonable when she's already changed so much Helping her co-worker Ju Ron from quitting, befriending Hugh Yeon, and gaining high school friends. It feels like the writer just put wants to make Unho more uh pi uh pitable. And Ji Hyo constantly using work as an excuse for personal reasons while ignoring Ji Wan's questions. Isn't that great? Suman is so twisted. She didn't want Jiwan to be happy and in the process hurt, deceived, and used lots of people. Reading Unho's side of the story, I feel really bad for him. Even after that, he still didn't, did not give up. That, yeah, that's the thing. I'm so mad she just told him that she did it. Like, why tell him that? That's fucked up. I think... For some reason, I feel like he didn't believe, he doesn't believe her and he wanted to say more. He probably was going to say something else about Suman or that he still liked her. But we'll see. Anywho, thanks for listening. I hope you have, and uh, I'll be back later. Bye. Hey, it's AMC me and I'm back with chapter 20 of the web novel, Marry My Husband. And we're on chapter 20, Someone with Eyes in Their Armpits. That title is crazy. <sighs> She'd fallen asleep thinking about something, but she slept well, without dreaming. That's awesome. Upon waking, Jiwan stretched and fumbled her for her glasses. When she opened her phone, she saw messages from multiple people. At the top were morning greetings from Minwan and Suman. Jiwan typed a short good morning and opened the messages Jihei sent her. Oh, she replied to her. Oh, yay. She replied back. Okay. <clears throat> Jihei, how's Friday? Everyone says it sounds good to them. I'm also good with that. Let's meet at Gangnam after work, she replied. Finally, she reached the last message. It was from Unho. Wake up. Isn't it time for salary women to wake up? She smiled at his comfortable nonchalance. I'm up. It isn't too early for a self-employed person to be up. Unho had said he ran a small cafe in his neighborhood. It was a bit of a shame considering how good he was at academics, but the job suited him. She was about to shut her phone when a message arrived from Joran. <clears throat> oh, okay. I put some effort into making a final proposal today. What if I get caught? I'm scared. Oh, yeah, because they had talked about earlier, several chapters ago, about her not doing too much in her proposal because... Is it Mr. Kim? Is it fucking piece of shit? Today was Thursday, the day Joran's proposal would be approved. There would be a meeting regarding its contents. Jiwon. This is her replying. So what if you get caught? The meeting happens today, so Mr. Kim won't be able to say anything. If he complains, you can blame me. Joran giggled after reading the message. Jae Hyun lying on the sofa, having woken up early for once. You pestered me so much saying you're too busy, but you have time to smile at your phone? Is asking you to change Yeonji's clothes pestering you? So, didn't I change your clothes in the end? He snapped. I want a divorce. Joran swallowed the thought with a cup of milk. She didn't want Yeonji to grow up with a single parent. What if she got teased for not having a dad? 
Also, when Joran got married, she had promised to live happily. She didn't want to break her parents' hearts by getting divorced. Girl, fuck that man, okay? Your parents will get over it. They'll be more upset that you stayed with the piece of shit. <laughs> Mr. Kim, here's the proposal. John Uk took the documents and flipped through them. Joran anxiously watched. This was the fourth time she'd submitted the same proposal in two weeks. If Yongguk were human, he would have caught it by now. You would think. Unless his eyes were in his armpits. Okay, that's where the saying is coming from. Yes, it's perfect. And it means exactly what I thought. Your ass can't see shit. <laughs> it's somewhat readable now, he said. So his eyes really are in his armpits, Joran inwardly nodded. You won't get any second chances next time. You know the evaluation report is coming up soon, right? Keep your head on straight. <laughs> John Ook stamped the last page with a grunt. Make copies and hand them out. Give the original to Mr. Yu. Yes, sir. Joran's mouth twitched the moment she turned around. Seeing her, Jiwon also had to stop herself from laughing. She texted Joran. I'll give Mr. Yu the original. What original? The or stamped original is right here. Juran looked at Jiwan. Jiwan shook a packet in her hand. Juran couldn't see it from there, but she was certain it wasn't the original proposal. Another message arrived a moment later. You should hurry and make copies. It's almost time for the meeting. As soon as Jiwan shut her phone, she took the documents to Jihyuk. <clears throat> Mr. Yu. Jihyuk rubbed his temples, glasses off, looking exhausted. He turned to Jiwon. He's pretty good looking. Jiwon's heart thudded like a sinner's. This was all because of Unho's nonsense. She handed over the documents as casually as possible. This is the proposal for the meeting today. Mr. Kim approved it. Leave it there and go get ready for the meeting. He spoke in a stiff, business-like tone. Unho is definitely mistaken. Preparing for meetings was the youngest employee's job. Jiwon took the papers from Joran and placed them on Suman's desk. Please set these up in the conference room with some coffee, too. Suman looked at Jiwon. Jiwon, I'm not the youngest, though. Not, not Jiwon, Miss Kang. Jiwon said with her index finger to her lips. Suman pounded. Suman, oh, not Jiwon, Miss Kang. Jiwon said with her index fingers to her lips. Suman pouted. Yes, Miss Kang. Thank you. As Jiwon returned to her desk, Suman narrowed her eyes and crossed her arms. Jiwon Uk would, be mean, would do menial work, computer work for her, but she couldn't do anything about physical tasks like this. So that's why his ass was never doing his fucking job because he was doing Suman's. What a fucking simp. And not in a good way. But I made all the coffee already. It's annoying enough that I'm a contract employee. Still upset about being humiliated this weekend, Suman simmered in anger. Finally, she whipped around to Hu Hyun, who sat next to her. Miss Yu, can you prepare the coffee for the meeting? I'll go set the packets up. Sure. Surprisingly, Hu Hyun agreed. Suman stapled the papers and frowned when she saw where Hu Hyun was going. I told her to make coffee. Why is she going to the department head's desk? Suman hovered over Ji Hyuk's desk, straining to overhear. Mr. Yu, please give me the company card. I'm going to buy coffee for the meeting. Hu Yian sounded so confident it was almost brazen. Ji Hyuk gave her a credit card. Submit the receipt. Thanks. I mean, thank you, Mr. Yu. Hu Yian walked out, beaming. Suman watched with her mouth open. Then she returned to her desk to angrily resume stapling. It's that easy? She just watched me make 20 cups of coffee for meetings by hand without telling me? She felt furious just thinking about it, not to mention Hu Yian and Ji Wan's relationship had been grating on her nerves. Suman pulled out her phone and began to type a message to Yong Uk, who was the easiest pushover in this office. She about to have him looking like a plum fool. I can't wait. Okay. Ooh, an Americano, one employee exclaimed. Perfect. Drinking instant coffee in the morning always makes me feel a bit queasy, another agreed. Great sense, Hugh Yan. The workers wriggled with confidence. 
uh, wiggled into the conference room like freshly caught squid, <laughs> but they brightened when they saw the takeout coffee. Suman sat down and smiled at Hu Yian. I was just getting thirsty. Thanks, Miss Yu. Sure. Hu Yian sat down too. Soon, Yon Uk entered the conference room. What's this? Who bought this coffee? He bellowed. Hu Yian raised her hand. I did. Are you proud? You think you did a good job? Jong Uk shook his chubby finger at Hu Yian. Why would you buy expensive coffee from the cafe for a morning meeting? We have coffee in the break room. You're only a contract employee. Does the company card seem like a gift card to you? We already spent too much. Why waste money on this? The employees flinched and straightened. Jong Uk puffed out his chest, assuming it was because of him. Newbies these days don't know how to save company money. Back when I first entered the company. Mr. Kim. <gasps> A rough, deep voice cut off Joan Uk's rant. I gave her that card. Ji Hyuk's expression was stiffer than usual. Joan Uk forced a laugh and scratched the back of his head. <laughs> oh, I thought, uh, but the fact that she took the company card to buy coffee... It's my personal card. I don't like instant coffee. As soon as he finished speaking, Hu Yian dashed over and held out the card. Thank you, Mr. Yu. Yes. Jong Uk pulled, put the card in his breast pocket and moved to the head of the table. Yong Uk shuffled his feet and took a seat next to him. Let's begin. This is Miss Yang's proposal, correct? Yes, Mr. Yu. Jaron flipped the papers of the crisp packet. This is a proposal for packaging and marketing our new product. It combines the recently trended keywords well-being with UNK's foods flagship product, convenience foods. Even families of one or two could enjoy the simple and healthy meal. Our inspiration for the package design was a plain paper bag. It stands out from all the colorful packages of other companies. Page 3 has a list of ingredients and page 5 has the package design. Papers rustled throughout the room. Everyone reviewed the proposal and asked Joran the occasional question. The meeting progressed smoothly, or so it seemed. Next is advertising. The best methods of exposure are public networks and commercials, but we've confirmed that product placements and television shows performance the best. As a result, we will minimize effectiveness we will maximize effectiveness at a much lower expense by requesting product placement in cable TV shows enjoyed by people in their 20s and 30s, as they are our main target. The timeline and costs for commercial compared to television shows are on page 15. The employees all flipped through the pages, as did Ji Hyuk, who listened attentively with a ballpoint pen in hand. As you can see on the chart, the cost of the commercials... Wait, Miss Yang. Ji Hyuk lifted a hand and paused the meeting. Yes, Mr. Yu? I have the wrong proposal. I have the wrong proposal. There's an advertisement model on page 15, not a chart. Joan Uk strained his neck to see the proposal in Ji Hyuk's hand. It was indeed page 15, but on the page was a family oriented actor's photo, not a chart. Miss Yang, I told you to give the original to Mr. Yu right away. He finally had a reason to pick on her. At his loud bellow, Joran jumped up from her seat and walked over to Ji Hyuk, taken aback. Suman clasped her hands together with a faux, worried expression. Oh, I'm sorry, Joran said. This proposal was rejected by Mr. Kim. I must have given you the wrong one. It's fine. Please go bring me the correct one. Yes, Mr. Yu, she turned to go. No, wait. Ji Hyuk glanced through the proposal and stopped Joran. Excuse me for a moment, Mr. Kim. He took the proposal from Joan Uk's hands and scanned the table of the contents. Aside from the order and font, everything else remained the same. Miss Yang, is this a rejected proposal? Yes, this is the new proposal, approved today before the meeting. Joran held out her packet. Ji Hyuk looked through this one as well. It looked the same as Joan Uk's, aside from slightly different fonts and tables of contents. What are you doing, Miss Yu? Go and bring a copy of the right one, Joan Uk bellowed. Yu Yian cautiously stood and crept out of the conference room. Mr. Kim. Ji Hyuk turned his indifferent stare at Joan Uk. Y yes, Mr. Yu? Why did you turn the first proposal down? 
Jeon Uk blinked. Uh, I rejected it because everything was wrong. Miss Yang must have been in a rush. She bought me a la she brought me a lazy proposal, practically copy and pasted from the internet. And why did you approve this proposal? Ji Yuk asked. After I rejected a few additional proposals, she brought this one. It was finally somewhat better, so I approved it as good enough. A few proposals? Ji Hyuk's eyebrows furrowed. Yes, is there a problem? Joan Uk, still not realizing what was going on, took the first proposal and pretended to skim it. Take a look at this. Ji Hyuk dropped the fourth proposal in front of Joan Uk. It's the same proposal. Why did you approve one and reject the other? Joan Uk tensed and flipped through the pages. As Ji Hyuk said, it was the same proposal, save for the table of contents. A vein popped out of his shiny head. What is this, Miss Shang? Are you joking? I... The thing is... Frozen from shock, Joran stood there without responding. Just then, Juan stood. I apologize. Miss Yang wrote the first proposal, but I wrote the current one. Twenty pairs of eyes shifted to Jiwon, but she wasn't scared of the spotlight anymore. Jiwon ignored all the stares and looked straight at Ji Hyuk. His sharp eye gaze zeroed in on her. What are you saying, Miss Kang? Ji Hyuk said. Miss Yang had been feeling unwell for some time. I tried to help her, but I thought the proposal she gave me was a reference, so I copied it exactly and returned it to her. Miss Yang didn't have time to rewrite it, so she resubmitted it to Mr. Kim. It was my mistake. I should have given you the first proposal, Mr. Yu. I'm sorry. Jiwon bowed. Of course, it was only for Ji Hyuk, not Joan Uk. Miss Kang, are you in your right mind? Ji Hyuk roared. Or sorry, not Ji Hyuk. <laughs> Jong Jong Uk, Mr. Kim, uh, roared. How can you make a mistake like this? You're no better, Miss Yang. You should have asked for more time if you needed it. Mid rant, however, Jong Uk felt a piercing gaze. Slowly, he faced Ji Hyuk. From long experience, he could tell Ji Hyuk was furious. Jong Uk. Ji Hyuk removed respectful formalities. Who do you think you're tossing the blame at? The employees held their breaths, thinking it was a shame there wasn't any popcorn. Ah! Oh, shit. That's how it ends. I wanted to hear him get his ass ripped. But I guess we gotta wait. Dang. Okay, so some of the top comments... A shame there was no popcorn, right? Divorce the loser and fire the other one. Out of a cannon, even. <laughs> yes. As the other employees, I'm also dearly missing popcorn for this drama that is unfolding. <laughs> His downfall is imminent. I wish we all had popcorn. Man, that was good. That chapter was really good. <laughs> and the title doesn't sound so crazy now. But that's really it for this video on uh, the web novel, Marry My Husband. I'll be back next month. With probably, I'm going to try and say five videos or five chapters again. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great day, afternoon, morning, whatever time it is that you're listening. And I'll see you next time. Uh, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you're thinking of something to comment, let's think of an emoji. Popcorn. Duh. <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye.